Hello everyone, welcome to Mifratech. Today in this section we will see an important machine learning algorithm that is random forest. So these are the concepts we will be covered in this section. First we will see what is random forest algorithm and how uh, exactly that random forest algorithm will work in machine learning and what are the applications of random forest and why you have to use random forest algorithm. So what are the advantages of random forest algorithm? At last we will see so one use case that is iris flower analysis. So let's start our discussion with what is a random forest. So random forest is a supervised machine learning algorithm. So it is mainly used both for classification as well as regression problems. So we can solve both uh, regression related and classification related real time and uh, problems using this random forest algorithm. So what exactly is random forest will do means it creates a uh, like n number of decision trees based on our data set. So, so after that each decision tree will predict some uh, output. So uh, we combining all the like uh, take the majority voting of all the output and finally select the best solution by means of like uh, told voting. So this is how random uh, like a uh, random forest algorithm will exactly work. So in this uh, the name random forest what is this forest means as I told it creates uh, like a number of decision trees in the training like training period that is why we call it as a forest here random is nothing but in the given data set we are first step what we are doing is we are creating one more data set that is bootstrap data set what is that bootstrap means here randomly we are picking some of the data values from the given data set and uh, we are making one new data set that is bootstrap data set or you can call bootstrap sampling so the main feature of that bootstrap sampling is it can uh, like it can contain a uh, repeated values also like duplicate values so that is you know, why we are given the random uh, the algorithm name as random forest so it is an important ensemble learning technique so uh, the random forest make use of both uh, like a bagging bagging and feature randomness so it extracts the features of uh, the data set for uh, while creating a decision tree like to create use uh, the particular data as a uh, like a for tree it is a node or a branch so like that it mainly depends on the feature so random forest tree is a method that operates by constructing multiple decision trees as i told in the training phase it is going to create a multiple decision trees so the decision of the majority trees is chosen by the random forest as a final decision like we are going to uh, finalize our uh, fi like a final output or final model as based on the majority of voting. So like major majority of like correct predicted accurate prediction of all the combining all the like decision trees uh, output you can consider. So like uh, this the like uh, you can uh, see or you can represent a random forest like this. So as you can see there are a number of n number of trees from tree, tree 1 to up to tree n so it will create a number of n number of trees after creating n number of trees each tree is going to give us or predict an output so we are combining or we are taking the majority of the voting to uh, finalize our model so this after combining we are going to get our final predicted output so let's see how this random forest algorithm will work so it mainly works in two stages in first stage what it will do means it randomly select k features from a total m features as i told from the total entire given data set it is going to take a sum data set is nothing but which contains the features only so in those features it randomly takes some of the features which will be less than the total number of features among them it use it, it will take some of them as a nodes and some of them for branches depending, depending on, on their feature, feature importance then it, it is going to create a, a like a decision trees in the first stage the second stage after creating the number of decision trees we are going to give uh, the like a test we will test the each decision trees by giving the test features for them so each will give us the some will, will, like each decision trees will predict some output so those output will be stored so after that we are going to calculate the each predicted decision tree output like for vote we are calculate the votes for each predicted target so highly voted predicted target will be taken as a final prediction model so this is how that's exactly the random forest algorithm will work. So let's see what are the different applications of random forest algorithm. So random forest algorithm can be used in many fields. So let's see by one by one. So first we'll see what is in banking uh, like uh, in a banking or a financial industry. 
so in the in banking random forest is mainly used to like to uh, like classify the customers uh, who are going to pay loan or who are uh, doing regular transaction and who is loyal to the those banks or in the financial field or in the next or we can also see so the, those, those are who are not uh, like uh, taken the loan and not paying any debt those are like uh, we can call it the fraud customer uh, which has so so based on the record data set we are going to classify the customer so this will be very helpful in banking and financial industry so we can also use random forest in medical field so like to identify the correct combination of components which is required for a particular medicine or we can identify the disease by only analyzing the by analyzing patient medical records we can uh, identify disease in advance so in the stock product market also we can use random forest algorithm like it can identify the what is the expected loss or a profit in a particular stock we can predict using random forest algorithm and in the in the e-commerce field like to find out the customer churn or like we can recommend some of the product based on the customer uh, previous history so we can use in the in these fields the random forest algorithm so why we have to use random fund because we already have a lot of algorithm like KNN, logistic regression, linear regression. Why you have to use random forest? So the mainly the, the there are three different features are like you can call important features. That is why you have to use random forest. The first one is it can be used both for classification and regression task. Like uh, using a single random forest algorithm can to do both classification as well as regression uh, related problems. So second one is overfitting like as you can see in some of the algorithm overfitting is a critical problem but in random forest we don't come across this problem because as a random forest is going to create a number of as like I, I told earlier n number of decision trees so all the data and the data set will be taken care of by those all those decision trees so there is no problem like overfitting will come in random forest it will be automatically handled in this algorithm so one of the in, one more important advantage is as you come to classification problems by using random forest classifier it can easily handle missing values so missing values will decrease the accuracy of the model or it is going to very make it a model very bad for prediction so to come uh, like uh, handle those problems random forest it inbuilt it can handle the missing values so by handling this the accuracy of the model will be increased so so these are the different like you can call three major importance why you have to use random forest in compared to other algorithms so what are the advantages of random forest as i told it can be used both for classification and the regression algorithm like related problems in a real world applications we can make use of this algorithm and we can also like as i told it come across or it can handle overfitting problem very easily in those uh, algorithms which will we can get errors or we can get a less accuracy uh, when because of overfitting problems in those cases we can make use of this random forest algorithm and we can also like uh, to like feature extraction like what uh, we can do the feature extraction of from the data set because uh, what are the uh, features from the data set which are uh, like exactly impacting uh, on the our output result so those features can be easily like extracted using this random forest algorithm so let's see what uh, like uh, how we can implement this random forest algorithm on a, any data set in this you in this uh, example or use case have taken iris flower analysis so iris data set will be commonly taken for any machine learning algorithm to uh, like to uh, apply those any algorithm so here what is the problem is here we have a lot of like a uh, uh, number of flower data set which has some features so in those data set we have to classify the species like because iris species have mainly three types of species one is uh, uh, as i told setosa and virginica and versicola there are three di different species so we are going to uh, based on the features of those flowers we are going to classify them as three different species so to do that here we are using uh, random forest algorithm so let's see how that can be done so for in the first step what we have to do is first we have to import a data set for that we are using importing from sklearn.data set we are importing low, load underscore i so this command is going to import iris data set to our uh, before uh, like iris data set we are loading after loading the data set we are importing random class forest classifier because as this is a classification problem we have to import random forest classifier to do that we have to use this command that is from sklearn.ensemble as i told random forest 
uh, it is an ensemble uh, like uh, technique so you have to use a from sklearn dot ensemble import random classifier after importing both load data set under random correct uh, uh, application uh, algorithm you have to import uh, related dependent uh, libraries like pandas and numpy using import pandas as pd and import numpy as np so in the next step we are loading the data set so uh, the load data set it we are loading using uh, we are giving to another variable like iris so after that the entire data set uh, to make it visually very appealing and uh, to understand very easily we are converting the data data set which is in the csv comma separated value into low data frame to convert that we are using pandas library to do that we have to use the command pd dot data frame of iris data in that we can mention the column names column names will be taken as the iris the feature names will be taken as the column name so if you use df dot it it is just giving the top five rows of that data set as the output so you can see in the data set so these are the four different features we can see in this data set that is a sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so we, for that uh, previously defined data frame we can add one more column that is species species is nothing but well, the, the, the different iris species what we can get that is setosa virginica and versicola so to do that we have to use the command df of species we are adding that to the existing iris target like a data set so if you use df dot head we are going to get so as you can see the output uh, one more column is added the next step we are going to train the model to do that we are we are mentioning wow, in the entire total data set what we have what number of or what percentage of uh, data set is taken for training and uh, remaining data set will be taken for testing we have to mention using this line in this time we are, we are mentioning df of is underscore train np in a random uniform way like i randomly we are taking like entire in the entire data set we are taking uh, 75% for training purpose if i just mention df dot head in the one more column is added i can see is train in that uh, which row is taken for uh, training will be take will be shown as true if it not taken it will be shown as false this is how we are going to like uh, split the data for training and testing after that we'll see what, exactly what number of rows and will be taken for testing and training so to do that here we'll use this command that is train comma test df of is underscore train is equal to true means those much of data like that row will be taken for training so that will be added to train if i use df of is underscore train is equal to false so that data will be added for test so let's to calculate the total number in a number way have to find the length of both train and test so to know the exact number of observation will be in the training and uh, testing data set we'll use this command that is print number of observation in the training date length of train the next will use length of test so in this let us say exactly 118 rows will be taken for training purpose and remaining 32 will be taken for testing so we can also extract the features so to uh, keep uh, features in one side we are using features will be available in the column as i told in the data frame so we'll take df dot columns so that will be assigned to feature if i just print these features i'm going to get these are the different features available in the data set so based on these features only we are going to predict which for which uh, iris species this uh, that data row data will belong to so like sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so uh, like as i told we cannot we cannot give a like a string value like this uh, set of virginia uh, versicola so these are the string values or any character value you cannot apply to any new uh, machine learning algorithm so first we have to convert them to numerical value to do that we are using factorize so factorizing means here we are giving for each species name as like z here we merely have three types of so we used 0 1 2 as for mapping so if we take that will be taken as a y target column so let's uh, uh, use our random forest classifier and train it to do that first we'll take a random forest as a clf in that random forest we have these are in, as you can see in the output these are a number of parameters we can modify in this random forest classifier algorithm so just in this example we kept it as usual so to fit into a model or we train the model we have to use see here random forest will be taken as a clf if we do that clf dot fit of a train here i am taking train the feature column uh, features as a x and uh, target as a y so if we fit using x and y the model will be trained 
so after the model has been trained we are predicting the like to test the output we have to predict the output so for that we have to use the command clf dot predict so in the predict we have to give the 25% uh, of testing data so finally our uh, predicted output will look like this 0 1 2 you can see because 0 means that is the set of 1 means virginica 2 means versiculus as we ma mapped earlier so we can also calculate the probability of a prediction to do that we have to use clf dot predict of predict underscore prob of test features as I told probability uh, 0 to 10 means starting 10 will be shown here so predict underscore probability is going to give the predict probability of the prediction so after that again we'll uh, name back our like mapped we are 0 1 2 as the for our outputs so we again map them back to like, like Ketosar, 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 we gave them real, real name to see, see the actual, actual and predicted values. values so here in this uh, like a data frame we are going to uh, see what is the actual values and what is the predicted values as you can see here there is a if there is you can see the intersection of setos and set so because in the data set also it is setosa we predicted 13 correctly as you can see in versicolor it is worth 5 is versicolor so it uh, out of 7 it predicted 5 correctly but versicolor it predicted as virginica so there are two errors in this example and virginica it clearly uh, like a predicted correctly thus out of 12 it predicted 12 correctly so as I told, there are total number of prediction is 32. Out of that number, number of accurate prediction will be 30, 30 as, as we can see in this output. output. So uh, let's calculate what is the accuracy. So out of 32 prediction, 30 will be correct and 2 will be false. So we are going to get accuracy of 93%. So this is how uh, any random forest algorithm can be implemented to any data set. So it is how it is going to predict our output. As I told, we are going to get 93% accuracy in this model.